The world is a very dangerous place. But if we want to create security long term, we need investments in disaster relief and development. That's the budget of AID to go alongside what the Department of Defense does in hard power. We're experiencing the largest refugee crisis since the end of World War II. The bulk of the refugees are women and children who, if we don't address their needs, will become a lost generation, will become a generation of displaced uh, and uneducated kids who are rootless and more likely to become attracted to more extremist ideologies. We see the current conditions in, in East Africa with famine, with large-scale migration. Those are the underlying causes that create instability. Famine, drought, unstable governments, corruption, all of these programs that typically are not dealt with militarily. I've learned in these conflicts in my life, you cannot kill your way to success here. If there's a 30% cut at the State Department and a lot of that gets moved to the Pentagon, that somehow we're safer. I don't think anything is further from the truth. I'm not surprised to see military leaders speak up and speak out in support of work like CARE does, because they see on the ground how important it is to conflict stabilization, how important it is to preventing them going into certain places. You need hard power for short-term tactical gains, but long-term, it's education, it's access to drinking water, it's nutrition, it is the ability to find employment. Those kinds of long-game objectives are the ones that create lasting security. I was blessed at, at U.S. Africa Command to have a senior U.S. aid representative resident in the command. U.S. aid brings a, a number of capabilities that simply are not resident in the military. They bring cultural understanding and expertise. It's not charity. This is national security. And when we don't make an adequate in, uh, investment in prevention, we pay the cost. The truth is, from pound for pound, the investment in humanitarian assistance and development, it's investment in prevention, and it's more cost effective than not addressing the seeds of conflict, having the conflict erupt, and then having to pay a much higher price in blood and treasure. We can invest now or fight later. And the war later will be trillions, the investment now hundreds of millions, and so that's kind of the balance we have. If we work it right, this is the first and the best chance you have of stopping a more costly war. The United Nations has said the hunger crises we're experiencing right now are the largest since the Second World War. And that's actually when CARE was founded. At the end of the Second World War, when there were people starving in war-torn Europe, a group of Americans came together, created the first ever care package, and provided desperately needed relief to those people. Dropping that food pack provides a different face of the United States of America. It provides a face of compassion, of competence, of caring. That is embedded in the thinking of people all around the world. If we isolate ourselves from the world, and we just turn over all the problems to somebody else. One of my beliefs is eventually they all show up at our doorstep. When we're talking right now about 20 million people on the brink of famine, what we're trying to do is prevent famine. Once we've reached famine, we've failed. We don't let other people suffer half a world away and just not care. This is less than a penny on the dollar of federal spending. It's a tiny, tiny percentage of what the government spends. When I visited with refugees from South Sudan and Uganda in desperate need of the basics, food, water, and shelter, I knew I wanted to be at an organization like CARE carrying out the work on the ground because I understood how important and powerful an organization like CARE is in transforming people's lives. Mm -hmm.